So good evening. Uh, as I suspect most of you know, maybe all of you know, I'm Clayton Rose. I am the president. And I want to be the first to officially welcome you to Barry Mills Hall. This is a uh, simply wonderful day for Bowdoin. We're gathered to dedicate our newest academic building, but much more importantly, we're here to honor our 14th president and all that he's done for the college. Now, I'm going to offer a few remarks, because I'm a college president, and that's what I do. Um, I'm going to thank some folks. I'm going to give a little background on the building and offer a few comments on Barry. And then Scott Perper, our chair of our board of trustees, will offer some remarks and help to unveil this plaque that is subtly hidden over here to my left. Uh, and then we're going to hear from Barry. After that, we have plenty of food and drink and time for folks to congratulate Barry, to catch up with one another, and to see the building. And with Barry and Karen's involvement and permission, uh, the evening does not include a sit-down dinner, which will allow us to mingle and for all of you to have time with Barry and for Barry to have time with all of you. But there is plenty of food and plenty of drink available. Um, I want to begin by welcoming back Barry, Karen, Henry, George, and with us by live stream is Will. Welcome, Will. Uh, and Barry. <laughs> Barry and Karen's family uh, are here with us as well. David and Nancy Mills were there. Barry's brother and sister in law, and Virginia Gordon, Karen's sister, is somewhere here. Up oh, there you are. Welcome. We are uh, so really pleased that all of you are here and being able to celebrate with us tonight. Karen, thank you for everything that you've done for the college over so many years, but in particular for the 14 where you were here, where you lived on our campus and made such an impact. We are incredibly grateful to you. Thank you. I also want to welcome back our 13th president, Bob Edwards and his partner and wife, Blythe, who are, I saw them somewhere. Oh. <laughs> Having subtly moved to the back of the room. Um, and we have four former board chairs with us this evening. Peter Small, raise your hand, Debbie Barker, Shelley Sear, Bob White, and a number of current trustees and emeritus trustees. Welcome to you all. Now, I want to uh, offer some important thank yous, and this for me is one of those fraught moments uh, where I have a great fear that I have forgotten someone, and that's probably true. I hope that I haven't, but if so, uh, I give you my apologies in advance. There are many, many people who played critical roles in imagining Barry Mills Hall, in designing it, and in its construction. It was a true team sport. I want to start with our architects from HGA. They were and are fantastic to work with. And they have designed, I hope you'll agree, something very special. And a number of them are here with us this evening. I hope you'll have a chance to catch up with them. Uh, Rebecca Sellis, who's the principal and was the overall lead on this project. Nat Madsen, uh, the key designer. Uh, Jessica Horscati, uh, who was at HGA at the beginning, left for reasons that we don't understand. But Jessica is a Bowdoin alum and was here during Barry's time, and that was a very special connection with the firm. Marcel Graff, Alex Terzik, Leighton Deer, Zach Pointer, and Lauren Pifo. To each of you and to all of your colleagues who were not here, thank you for everything you've done. Our general contractor, Consigli, they're the folks that actually made all this happen. Uh, Eric Botero's here, Stacy Harris, Matt Tonello, thank you all, and to the huge number of folks on your team that have made this a reality. From Bowdoin, there were many, many folks uh, who were critical to this, so narrowing it down is a little bit of a task, but there were two groups in particular uh, that were really at the center of the work that was done here. Uh, the group that worked in the early days on the vision, hiring the architect, and moving the project forward. Don Borkowski, now retired, but, and not here this evening, but you know Don well. Tim Foster, also retired, who's here this evening. Liz McCormick. Scott Mickeljohn, also retired, also here this evening. Matt Orlando, Jen Scanlon, and Mark Wetley. And then the program committee, 
that guided the project to ensure that it would actually meet the needs that we had laid out and had envisioned. Jim Adolph, Aviva Brafell, Chris Chong, our student from the class of 2020, Jordan Ferraris, Crystal Hall, Willie Lampert, Ann Oswalt, who so many of you know who's retired, Jill Smith, and Tricia Welch. John Simino, who heads capital projects for us, is not here tonight, but he oversaw the project from the Bowdoin side and did a magnificent job. And I want to give a shout out uh, to a couple of people. The first is Mark Wetley, and I, I saw Mark earlier. I hope he's here. Are you here, Mark? He is here. I, yeah, there he is. So as many of you know, Mark is retiring after 38 years on our faculty. He's the A. Leroy Greeson Professor of Visual Arts. Mark has been involved in literally every significant facilities project on our campus since 1992, beginning with Smith Union and the renovation there. Uh, and Mark, we are going to miss your eye, your aesthetic sense, your sense of how the campus fits together, your good judgment, and your uh, uh, willingness to come into these meetings without any agenda or political leaning on which way uh, buildings should go. So, Mark, thank you from all of us for all of your amazing service. And Matt Orlando, where is Matt? He's here, hiding, there he is, all right. So Matt's our Senior Vice President for Finance and Administration. Matt runs the college. Uh, Matt has overseen this project, every other project, and it is no understatement to say that without Matt, none of this would have been possible and we would not be standing here. So thank you, Matt, for everything you've done. I want to say, thank several folks whose generosity has made this uh, project possible. Uh, Stan Druckenmiller, who's here with us this evening. I sp I spoke with Stan about the project in its early stages. Uh, because of his close relationship with Barry, I wanted him to know what we were up to. And without my asking, he said that he wanted to support the project. And he's made a very generous gift to do so. As we all know, Stan's generosity to Bowdoin over so many decades has literally transformed the college. Thank you, Stan. Thank you for being here this evening. Trustee Karen Walker, alumnus David Baxter, and parent of the class of 25, Kevin Hillier, all gave generously to support the building. And Barney Osher, class of 48, who's a close friend of Barry's, has made a generous gift to celebrate the building. Our thanks to David and Barney, who are not here, and Karen and Kevin are here. Thank you both for your generosity. Barry Mills Hall, this building was built to fill critical needs of the college, to add significantly to our stock of flexible and technology-friendly classrooms, to add space for faculty and student study, a state-of-the-art cinema studies classroom, and to provide campus with this amazing, large, beautiful event space, one that can seat almost 300 for dinner, for reunions, for faculty meetings, and the myriad events that we've either been constrained from holding or have been unavailable to us in some way, shape, or form. In addition, as we were conceiving of this building, I was searching for the right project, the special project, that would properly honor Barry and his legacy. And for obvious reasons, the paths converged, and here we are tonight. It's also important to know that like all of our projects recently, Barry Mills Hall is built to the highest standards of sustainability. In particular, along with a John and Lyle Gibbons Center for Arctic Studies next door that will be dedicated next month and will open in June, and John and Lyle are here with us this evening, it is constructed from cross-laminated timber, which is also what this podium is made from. Uh, no steel is used in the frame of this building or elsewhere. CLT has a significantly lower carbon footprint than steel. It's stronger than steel, and it has a better fire rating than steel, which took a little time to convince the main fire marshal of. Uh, this is one of the first buildings in the country to use CLT. It is the future, and I hope you'll agree that it is beautiful. Let me turn now to Barry and offer a few words, and I know that Scott will as well. So Barry arrived at Bowdoin in 1968 from Warwick, Rhode Island. 
Dean's List student. He graduated cum laude in 1972 as a double major, of course, everybody here double majors, <laughs> in biochemistry and government. He earned his doctorate in biology in 1976 from Syracuse and his law degree from Columbia in 1979, graduating as a Harlan Fisk Stone Scholar. He went on to serve as the deputy presiding partner of Debevoise Plimpton in New York, one of the preeminent international law firms. Barry was named to the Borden Board of, o Borden Bode, <laughs> Bowden Board of Overseers in 1994 and became a trustee of the college in 1996. During that time, he was a member of the Academic Affairs Committee and he chaired and was a member of the Student Affairs Committee. He also served on the Executive Committee and in 2000, he was elected chair of the Presidential Search Committee, looking for a successor to Bob. <laughs> A position he held until fellow members of the committee urged him to throw his hat into the ring, and the rest is history. Barry served as president of the college from July 2001 through June 2015. In March of 2017, he was named deputy chancellor and chief operating officer at UMass Boston. Four months later, he was named interim chancellor, and that was a post he held until stepping down in the summer of 2018. That's its own story, which many of you know about, but as you would expect, it was all about selfless service from Barry. A couple of Bowdoin fun facts about Barry. He shares a birthday with none other than Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain, <laughs> September 8th. And along with Chamberlain, Samuel Harris, Kenneth Sills, and Roger Howell, he's the fifth alumnus to serve as president of our college. The years of Barry's presidency were some of the most transformative in our history. It is almost impossible to summarize the impact of his 14 years, but I'm gonna try by touching on a few highlights. He will perhaps best be remembered for how he changed thousands of lives and the trajectory of the college by improving access to, Bowdoin, to a Bowdoin education and by expanding racial and socioeconomic diversity among our students. During his time, our applications grew by 66% from about 4,100 to just under 7,000. The number of students receiving financial aid grew by 25%. Students of color more than doubled from 13 to 30%. He worked closely with our faculty to redefine a liberal arts education at the dawn of the 21st century. He advocated for pi pivotal academic programs like digital and computational studies, which will be housed in this building, and foundational initiatives like the McKean Center for the Common Good that continue to set us apart. The endowment more than tripled from 433 million to just under a billion four, and it boosted our endowment per student from 270,000 to just under 700,000. Barry led the college through the 9-11 attacks and the aftermath. These took place only a few months after he assumed the presidency. Several years later, we were faced with the global financial crisis, and Barry, with his team, navigated it beautifully, holding the community together, avoiding layoffs and pay cuts, significant program reductions that some of our peers were forced to undertake. And he held fast to his commitment to access and opportunity, not wavering on the college's new policy to replace grants with loans. That was an act of great leadership at a time of enormous uncertainty, and it was strengthened by his deep faith in the ongoing support of the Bowdoin community. When Barry was preparing to step into the job, folks remember him saying that buildings and construction, <clears throat> excuse me, wouldn't be a priority. So much had been done during Bob's administration. Every president says this. <laughs> it is never so. <laughs> and thank goodness in Barry's case. In fact, it's so easy to take for granted the changes that came at Bowdoin and what, what transformed our college campus. And I'm gonna just give you a taste. Canbar Auditorium in Studzinski Hall. Watson Arena, the Edwards Center for the Art, named for Bob and Blythe, the Buck Fitness Center, the landmark renovation and expansion of the Walker Art Building, and the, and the full restoration of the Chapel Towers. Although I heard you had an original other plan for that, but that was, it wasn't gonna work. The creation of Canbar, Osher, West, the Out Schwartz Outdoor Leadership Center, a new children's center, and the pier and the dock at Schiller. And every single one of the bricks was renovated. Nearly 50 projects in all, each strengthened the college in its own way, more than any other president has undertaken in our history. And lest we forget, Bowdoin won its first NCAA National Team Championship under Barry, 
and there were three more before he retired. It is really impossible to overstate Barry's impact on Bowdoin College. Barry, on behalf of a grateful college, thank you for your wisdom, your vision, your courage, your strength, your care, your compassion. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for a lifetime of devotion and service that has transformed Bowdoin College. Thank you, Clayton. Well done. You've left me nothing to say now. <laughs> Barry and Karen, Henry, George, Will by live stream, fellow trustees, gathered alumni, Bowdoin community, and friends. I was incredibly honored when asked to say a few words here this evening at this dedication of Barry Mills Hall. That said, I've never spoken at a building dedication before and wasn't really sure what one says during these special occasions. So I decided to do what I hear is in vogue. I went to chat GPT. <laughs> and faster than I could input in my instructions, I was delivered an incredible, memorable dedication speech. <laughs> Further, I found I could hit the revision icon and get new and improved versions. I felt I was onto something. Then I added, make it humorous. And that is when the real entertainment started. <laughs> Let me read a short snippet from ChatGPT right now. Now, I'm not sure if you know this, Barry, but when they first announced that they were naming a building after you, some people were a little confused. They thought they were talking about the Barry Manilow Hall. <laughs> but no, this is the Barry Mills Hall, not the Barry Manilow Hall. Although I have to admit, I can definitely see the resemblance between the two of you. <laughs> Both of you have that certain je ne sais quoi. So with that, while highly entertained, I hit delete, and I will now deliver my own words. In 2004, Barry asked me to join the board. I still wonder how my name got pulled from the Mills sorting hat. But it again reconnected me to Bowdoin in a structured and committed way. Exposed me to diverse issues, ideas, thinking, people, and more. Needless to say, it was very different from my everyday, financially focused world. Once again, Bowdoin continued its, continued its way of expanding my horizons and changing my life. But isn't that what Barry does too? Reaching out to many in his own very extroverted way with boundless energy, flowing ideas, pushing one by asking, why not? Which ultimately leads to changing people's lives. This gathered crowd today speaks volumes about who Barry is, what his leadership has meant to Bowdoin, and what he has meant to each one of us on a very personal basis. Two young Bowdoin graduates have been in the news in the past month, Justin Pearson and Evan Gershkovich. They came to Bowdoin while Barry was president to continue their personal journey, to learn to think critically, to hone clear communication skills, to chase and do the right thing to work for the common good. We and the world are seeing the power of their work, of their individual strength, and from what was shaped because of the culture Barry's important leadership created here at Bowdoin, from which they learned and grew as people. This building is an incredible testament to Barry's presidency with its beautiful lines its campus location, and welcoming spaces. But I hope, as the years go by, as new generations come to Barry Mills Hall, that these classroom spaces, faculty office, and auditorium, and this auditorium, 
of many future gatherings will be places where young people will continue their development with the best of what Barry has taught all of us, to be brave, to work hard, to make a difference in this world, to connect with people and stay devoted to do the right thing, and importantly, embrace the common good. Thank you, Barry, for everything you've done for this college and for all of us personally. I am going to um, add on to some of Clayton's remarks. And on behalf of all the trustees, I too would like to pay a special tribute to Stan Druckenmiller. Stan, for decades now, you have been incredibly generous to Bowdoin. Your commitment to the college, not just financially, but also through your ideas, your time and energy has been a critical ingredient to what Bowdoin has become. Barry Hip Mills Hall is just another example. I am confident I speak for everyone gathered here. Thank you for all that you do for Bowdoin College. I would now like to welcome Barry, Karen, George, and Henry to the stage to unveil this plaque that memorializes this moment, this magnificent hall, and Barry's presidency. And so everyone knows what it says. Let me read it. Barry Mills Hall, named in honor of Barry Mills, class of 1972, honorary 15, 14th president of Bowdoin College, transformational leader, champion of access and opportunity, architect of academic innovation, and a steadfast advocate of the college. And now I'll turn it over to Barry for a few words. Thank you so much. Well, this is um, uh, overwhelming. Uh, Clayton is a current college president. I haven't done this in a while, so um, here we go. Um, so I want to thank Clayton and the board uh, for this great honor. This is uh, more than I could ever imagine. And uh, I really am thrilled, and our family is thrilled, and thank you very, very much. I also want to thank all the Bowdoin folks who have organized this event. Dining Service is going to do its thing again. It's very exciting for the college. Um, people have recognized Karen, but it's important to really recognize Karen again, only because, you know, you've got to do that. Um, <laughs> but it's important um, what Karen has done for this college, what she's done for our nation, what she's done um, for our family. Uh, Karen is incredibly important to all of us, and what she did for Bowdoin um, has affected so many, many people's lives. Uh, and I hear it all the time as I travel around and meet Bowdoin alums. And <laughs> So an update on the family. Uh, Will is with us by uh, live stream, and thank you for arranging that. Um, Henry is here. Henry uh, lives in Chicago, and he and Annie, who is also watching by live stream, um, with our granddaughter, Molly. And so this is like big news for us, and we are just thrilled. So hi, Molly. Uh, and, uh, and George is there. Um, George, if you remember, the, you know, these guys grew up on Federal Street. And I used to walk George to school across campus. Uh, to Longfellow School before it became the Edwards Art Center. George now lives in San Francisco. He's a lawyer, and on the live stream is Grace. Grace and George um, are together, and we're going to get married hopefully within a year or so. <laughs> 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 and, uh, 
and uh, um, we're just, you know, delighted. Um, my brother David, David is here with Nancy. It's just great that they're here. And Ginny is here also. What Clayton didn't mention is that Ginny's daughter is a Bowdoin grad um, and is in medical school at UCLA right now. And so we're very proud of her, another successful Bowdoin grad. And then um, to all my classmates from the class of 1972 that are here, over 50 years ago we all arrived on this campus. It seems like yesterday, but it is 50 years. So, um, but I want to recognize uh, the um, old men on Zoom. <laughs> so old men on Zoom, um, COVID, Clayton remembers better than everyone when Zoom started, but every Saturday since Zoom started at four o'clock in the afternoon, Chip Fendler, who's here with uh, Lois, and Andy and Tessa, and they're here, and Randy and Callie, Glenn and Evelyn, and Josh, who is, I think, watching from Cleveland, uh, all the guys would get together um, on the phone every Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Now, sometimes I'm on the golf course, and sometimes Randy is sailing, and sometimes Andy's in Casanova. But we all never, we all try not to miss. We have what we call um, the uh, organ report. Uh, that's because <laughs> we're all getting old. We talk about what's breaking down. Um, and then we get on to important things um, about life and politics and all kinds of things. And rarely ever do we actually reminisce about Bowdoin. Um, and so it's just a special honor to be, I look out, there's so many friends here, um, and I look forward to seeing all of you and getting, spending some time. But it's a real honor. You know, it uh, really matters the neighborhood you hang out in, right? So uh, to have this building here in perpetuity, or at least as long as the college decides it should be here, um, uh, you know, to be across the street from Dave and Barb Rue, our great friends, to be just across the way from uh, Stan and Fiona, uh, to be joined literally at the hip to Lyle and John Gibbons, uh, to be down the road from Studs, to be adjacent to two genuine Bowdoin characters, uh, Bob Smith and, and uh, Steve and Paula May Schwartz, uh, it's a real honor. It's a great neighborhood, and I really do have to say, to be close to Stan and Fiona and across the street from Barb and Dave and connected to John and Lyle, these people are incredibly important in our lives. So being in this part of the campus, we may not be Appleton and Hyde, but we're still pretty important. <laughs> and so we're delighted, delighted to be here. Now, um, there are two Bowdoin presidents here today, um, Bob, and, and Bob Edwards and Bob in the back, probably, I'm guessing, and Blythe. Bob um, reintroduced me to Bowdoin. I lived, we lived in New York City. And I have to say, in the 1990s, in the time that when we lived in New York, Bowdoin didn't have the profile in New York City that it has today. And Bob came to see me in, at my office when I was working as a lawyer. And I, he and Tori had me as a development opportunity. And I was really disconnected. And so, Bob and I hit it off, and he invited me back to Bowdoin to a Beneath the Pines event. You people all remember this. You've all gotten hooked. And um, Pam Phillips took care of Karen and me, and we were hooked as a generation of parents who were connected to Pam Phillips. But that was how I started and came back to Bowdoin. And it was really been meeting Bob and his ambition for the college. Now, Bob is a big guy. He's a big guy even today, almost 88 years old, I think, with very broad shoulders. And when one thinks back to what Bob accomplished at this college over that period, he needed those broad shoulders. Because for everyone who's here who went to Bowdoin and had the privilege to go here, Bowdoin was a great school when we were here. It was a great place. But Bob came to Bowdoin in the 90s and realized that this place needed to have ambition and energy and move the place forward. And he did that. He that, did that in very courageous ways, in ways that have made Bowdoin an infinitely better school. When the history books are written about Bowdoin and the changes that occurred over that period, they are transformational for this college and really position this college to be a 21st century institution. So I want to thank Bob. <laughs>
And to Clayton and Julianne, thank you. This, um, these are not easy jobs. And candidly, this job's a whole lot harder to do than it was in the years that I did it. Um, to think about navigating this school through COVID in the way that Clayton, in a thoughtful, informed, steadfastly smart way, led this college. You know, it's an existential moment. It's a pretty lonely moment, too, when you think about what this place could have become. And yet all those colleges' presidents out there at that time, they all deserve an enormous amount of credit. But I really only care about Bowdoin. <laughs> So I want to thank Clayton for taking this college through the COVID period in a way that when you meet Bowdoin students of today and of that period, they're very, very grateful for the way that this college acted and treated them. And so thank you very much. But actually, more importantly, Clayton talked about my commitment to access and opportunity. Let's recognize his. And let's understand his steadfast commitment to access and opportunity and making it possible for students from across America and excitingly, internationally, to come to this college. It's not easy. It's not easy work. It requires real commitment. And Clayton has it. But he also quickly focused and understood that when places change, they need to change in all ways. They need to be inclusive places. They need to be places that work for all students and faculty and staff, regardless of where you come from. And Clayton's constant reminder, his constant suggestion to all of us that we need to be better people and make this place a better place will be important for Bowdoin for generations. No place is perfect but we can always strive to get better. And Clayton understood that and pushed this way, place in a way that's vitally important. And then when you think about what's going on on these campuses today, I spent a lot of time talking to college presidents and advising places across America. The mental health issues that are facing these colleges for their students are profound. His leadership on those issues has been incredibly important. And then finally, as I talk to college presidents across America, as you read in the media, the real issue, I think one of the existential issues for liberal arts colleges is the level of discourse on college campuses and the ability for people on campus to debate, to talk, to engage, not always comfortably, but in a serious way, is vitally important to the future of higher ed. It's vitally important to a liberal arts education. And Clayton identified this very early on and had the courage to be able to stand up and say that publicly. That's not easy work. There aren't many college presidents actually who do that. We have been fortunate to have a leader with the kind of backbone that's prepared to do that. So Clayton, for all of those things and more that I don't know from, not, from being afar, I want to congratulate you on this amazing leadership of this college. Thank you. So place matters, right? Place matters. When I first came to Bowdoin, you know, we moved from New York City, and it took me a long time to understand how important it was that Bowdoin is in Maine. And it didn't take me very long to realize how important Bowdoin is to Maine, but it took me a long time to understand how important it is that Bowdoin is in Maine. You know, we are on lands that came from the Wabanakis, that Sarah and James Bowden deeded to this college years and years and years ago. And we have our historic quad, it's my happy place. When I was at Bowden, people used to see me walking around the quad and saying, like, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was trying to think. Um, but we have our historic quad with the amazing architecture for all the eras of Bowden. And what's special about this college, we've been very fortunate because through those years, important leadership has made sure that there is beautiful architecture and this campus is almost like a park. It's a very special place. We were very fortunate, by the way, in the 60s. I don't think we had very much money, so we missed out 
on the horrible architecture of the 60s. <laughs> but aside from the 60s, well, we have Cole's Tower, but it, it works, right? But, as, but aside from the 60s, you know, when you look at this campus, you take enormous pride in what Bowdoin represents. And nobody was more careful and committed to that than Bob and Blythe Edwards. But certainly Clayton and Julian have continued that tradition to make sure that this place is a place that is so beautiful and that we all care about. So then we come to this site. So this site has a huge history, right? This is the land of Sid Watson and Terry Mahar and the Bowdoin hockey team, the Bowdoin men's hockey team and the Bowdoin's women's hockey team. And I can tell you that I spent a ton of time in the rink when I was a student. Now, I can't skate, or I can barely <laughs> skate, but I loved to watch Bowdoin hockey. Um, and there are stories. Those stories remain locked in the vault because <laughs> I want to keep my name on the building. <laughs> right? But one night, we were watching, Karen and I were in the rink, and we were watching a Bowdoin hockey game. And it was a cold night, and it was damp. And we were in Dayton Arena, and Karen leaned over, and she said to me, you had to go to this college <laughs> to enjoy watching a game in this place. <laughs> you know, Dayton Arena had had its day. And with the help of Bob White and others, we now have Watson Arena, which is a spectacular place to watch hockey. But it doesn't have that same feeling, right? It doesn't have that same feeling, but it's fantastic. It's fantastic. We love it. Um, and so um, the, the, um, so the space is now here. And the college, in its great wisdom, there is this now fabulous building named after me. And more importantly, a really, really exciting development for the college, the new Arctic Museum, made possible by John and Lyle Kivitz. <laughs> now this building is really a testament to what Bowdoin's all about. It's about ingenuity. It's about being innovative. It's about taking risk. It's about being sustainable. That's what this building is about. That's what the college is about. So this is our 21st century technology building, pushing this college forward and showing others, and it has been noticed, about the importance of doing mass timber. They're building buildings in Portland. They're actually building a building in Alston at Harvard with mass timber. Really all sort of started in some ways by what's going on at Bowdoin. And let's hope that the state of Maine understands that there's actually a use for timber and maybe we've created some economic development opportunity here in the state. <laughs> so alums come back and they look at all the buildings. And they go, wow, look at all the progress. Some of them grouse. They say, what the hell do you need all those buildings for? <laughs> right? But mostly they come back and they measure the progress of the college by all the new buildings and take pride in the prosperity that exists on our college campus. And it is true that all these wonderful buildings do represent our prosperous and successful campus and a Bowdoin that we should all be proud of. But what we really should be proud of, what we really should be proud of, is what goes on in those buildings. There are many Bowdoin faculty who are here today who do incredible work with our students. I saw it for 14 years, and I am confident that that continues today. These are people devoted to our students, to their research, and they do amazing work. And providing them with the facility and the opportunity to work in these kinds of spaces only guarantees that into the future, those folks will continue to do important work with our students. Because what's fundamental to Bowdoin, what we do is we teach and we learn. That's what colleges are about in the most comprehensive way. And creating the space that allows that to happen is really vital to the future of our college. So if you look at the rooms downstairs and these wonderful classrooms that are so flexible and will be able to be used in a variety of ways, modeled, I suspect, in many ways after what goes on across the street in the Rue Center, this is the future of our college. So the measure of our excellence, the measure of our future, is what goes on in those classrooms and the teaching and learning that happens there. 
So I'm delighted. I'm delighted that the anthropology department is there. I'm delighted that there's film studies there. Barbara Castor would be amazed at what we've created. Right? Um, and digital and computational studies, it's a program that was really important to me, and I think it's going to be really important to our students, and we know it is, into the future. So I'm delighted that that's here in this building, and then there's this space. And that's the other important part of both. The really unique part of Bowdoin, and all schools have this, I deal with a lot of colleges and universities, but Bowdoin is in many ways very, very special. Look at all the people here tonight. This is a place that believes in the enduring value of personal and friend friendly relations, of the way that people bind together and become Bowdoin people and understand the importance of being connected and staying connected, not only to support the college, which is a good thing, but to support each other. Because I know that all of you interact with people from this college all the time, always willing to provide help and assistance to anybody from Bowdoin. So when we look at this space, this is a space where Bowdoin people will be able to come and hang out have parties, and get together and connect. So when I think about this building, this building has all of the components of what this college is about, teaching and learning, and the importance of personal connection. So I couldn't be more proud. This is very, very cool. And so I want to thank all of you for being here. Um, many of you came very, very far, and I really appreciate that. And for the people who came close, that's hard, too, so thank you very much. <laughs> um, and to the board and to Clayton, once again, thank you for this very special honor. It will always be a thrill for me on my way out to Cundy's to drive by and see my name on a building on Bowdoin's campus. Thank you very much. Thank you.